I don't want to go here. <laughs> I want to bounce to yeah. terminal probably. There and you just go. Smile and pretend that I know everything's okay. Hey, Hello, hi. everybody. <laughs> uh, we had some technical difficulties again this morning. Uh, yeah. That's what happens. Um, hi, welcome to Getting Into Vault Part Two. We had Part One last week, um, and we're going to proceed to Part Two. For those who are not familiar with the series, um, it is a long form series. You will see us making mistakes. Um, this is us trying to learn Vault the very hard way, which is getting hands on the keyboard and um, debugging and troubleshooting. Uh, you're not, you're, you don't have to stay through the entire stream. That's okay. Uh, all of the stream will replay back on YouTube, Twitch, et cetera. So you can still find it if you have to drop in the middle of it. Um, we love to hear comments. We appreciate those who have dropped comments in the chat right now. Um, please interact with us in chat. If you uh, are very familiar with Vault and you can help us, please, we love the help. Um, as, <laughs> as you do, though, be respectful, be considerate. Um, and be professional. Uh, our community guidelines are available, so just check those out. But uh, as you interact in chat, be mindful of those. Uh, with that, we shall introduce ourselves. I'm Rosemary. I'm a developer advocate at HashiCorp, and my poor victim, well, learning, <laughs> I don't know. That sounds terrible. Uh, volunteer. 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 <laughs> Uh, Melissa, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Melissa Gurney Green. I run the community team here at HashiCorp, and I asked Rosemary to help me learn Vault the hard way. So, so here we are. Yeah, there we are. Um, so, Melissa, what did we do last week? Do you remember what we did last week? Oh my goodness. Um, server setup mostly. So we got um, we got Vault running, and um, we did the whole unseal. Um, Thing. And then we set up a few, I am forgetting the term for them, uh, basically keys, right? Secrets engines. Yes, secrets engines. There we go. Yeah. Um, so what was the surprising thing you learned in the process? I think I think overall it was easier than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think um, Kind of, kind of bouncing through things seemed a lot more intuitive than I thought it'd be. Not touching um, anything that manages secrets before, other than you know, the basic kind of GUI-based stuff. Yeah, awesome. Um, so today we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna level up. Um, I'm sorry, Melissa. <laughs> it's what gonna you, get complicated. We're going. It's to have fine three servers this time um, to, to update. Uh, and the reason why is we're talking about Vault high, high availability setup, right? So it's all good and well. Last week, we set up one server. Um, and we, we did not use dev mode, right? We went straight into let's set up a server. Uh, and that server did not use auto unseal. It uses the manual unseal, which you mentioned. Um, basically, it's the ability uh, to decrypt uh, to basically uh, decrypt the barrier that Vault has over all of the data and all of the information on, on all of the credentials. So we went through uns the unseal mechanism and then we just got started really quickly with uh, the key value store and we put some secrets in the key value store and just been, you know, moved things around, checked it out, learned about it. But in production, um, let's be honest, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> um, it's not like you would actually deploy one vault server uh, and then things are magically, magically perfect. Um, instead, you actually deploy something like three or uh, a number of vault servers um, so that you can have some kind of avail higher availability. So uh, I was supposed to create diagrams and then I forgot. So here we are. Um, I'm going to share my screen with a diagram of a general rec general recommendation on reference architecture for uh, integrated storage. So let me share my screen and find which one it is. Okay. So this is a recommended architecture for um, integrated, for what is the raft is storage or integrated storage. Um, Vault has a number of storage backends. We didn't talk about that. Um, but do you have any questions on that, Melissa? Ooh, let's see here. About not about the diagram, but in general about storage backends because we didn't talk too much about them in the last stream. Um, we didn't really. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. So so I'm I'm a little curious as to as to what can be used as a storage backend and why you would choose one over the other. Yeah. So there are a couple different kinds of storage backends available to you. Um, there is. Let's see. Open up documentation. Um, there's a console backend, which was, I think, the more previously one of the more popular ones um, that folks were using. Uh, and then there are database ones. There are, you know, we're going to search back in storage internals. Of course, it's not internals. There we go. Um, wow. Where is the console backend? There is a nice, lovely list of them. One second. We're going to find it. Um, ah, storage backends. So there's a number of storage backends. Uh, you see Azure, Cassandra, CockroachDB, DynamoDB, CouchDB. Um, there's a file system backend in memory, lots of databases, um, S3, Zookeeper. So you can make that choice, right? If in your organization you don't, uh, you know, let's say you ha you prefer to use one of these, right? Because it's certified by your organization, you might decide that you want to use, you know, I don't know, cockroach for some reason, um, because you anticipate having, um, you know, some specific components that you want to to write into a database, and you know how to use cockroach, and you want you know how to manage cockroach DB yourself. Then this is maybe something that you could attach as a storage backend. Um, now, if you're not that if you're not that committed to a specific storage backend, you want to use something else. Um, the one that we recommend now is something called integrated storage or raft. Um, basically, the the raft uh, console is using raft, right? So, um, if you were using the storage backend before with console, um, it's very similar uh, similar process as uh, the integrated storage mechanism. We just pulled out the raft portion of the logic from console and put it directly in Vault itself. Um, and when you use Raft, what you're doing is you're um, basically replicating all the data uh, across each server. So when you have multiple servers, um, it, it tries to achieve consensus on the data using the Raft consensus algorithm. Um, and there are some things that you might want to do just to back up that storage regardless in case all of your Vault servers go down uh, and you need to back it up. There's a Vault snapshot, which we'll talk about in a later stream because we're trying not to boil the ocean in every stream. Um, but in terms of the choice on backend, some things might just be that you're familiar with it, you're familiar with managing it, your organization's familiar with managing it. Um, but if you prefer to just create Vault and put it in sort of this, this, its own isolated architecture, um, you can choose the integrated storage uh, backend. Um, and that will sort of make it easy to get started and to, to use um, a storage backend out of the box without necessarily you managing another database or something else. All right. So let's see. I'm going to pause and check out the chat. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you to Chris for putting something, uh, for putting the link to YouTube. You can find this on YouTube if you prefer to watch there. Um, and the playbacks will also be on YouTube. All right. So what we did. Um, was that there are some things that I pre-staged, so Melissa does not have to know Terraform. Um, I did use Terraform. <laughs> I did use Terraform to provision some of this, um, but I have three vault servers. So uh, three vault servers in what each zone. So one in zone A, one in zone B, one in zone C. Um, and then the three vault servers are all uh, on Linux VMs in AWS. Um, there is a load balancer that I have in place as well. We're not really going to talk as much about the load balancer right now, but um, that's for a later step. Uh, but in the meantime, um, last week we only set up one vault server. Um, and so that one vault server is the only active vault server. Now we're going to distribute uh, the well, we're going to have vault servers in the other two zones and we'll be able to um, have high availability. So if one zone goes down, we have another server available to us. We can still access secrets and everything. We don't have to worry. Any questions, Melissa? No, I think I think it's time to just jump in. <laughs> yeah, let's just jump in. OK, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And you are going to share your screen now. OK, let's go. Uh, uh, By the way, I'm not going to get too, into too many details. If folks are interested in the exact uh, configurations, um, there are security groups allowing 8200 between vault servers and 8201 between vault servers. Um, and that uh, that's pretty much the 
main security groups that you that are enabled between the vault servers. But otherwise, um, I have not. I, there is not much more other than the Terraform configuring some of this. Okay, so first things first, we have three vault servers. Um, for those who missed last week's stream, I did explain we are using Boundary so that Melissa does not have to download AWS key pairs left and right. Um, <laughs> And so she'll SSH through Boundary. Um, however, we do have a bit of an exception in this case because Boundary has a target, uh, what is called a target. It's grouping the three vault servers in one place, um, which is why we have to be a little bit more specific this week. We have to tell it which host to access. So Melissa, before you issue this connect SSH command, if you could add to the end of it, space dash host, dash ID, no space between. Okay. Equals. And then we'll start with the first host ID, um, which is HST underscore. Uh, you actually know what? This is probably easier to copy paste. Let me just copy paste. <laughs> um, one of the things that is a little bit, uh, if you're using the battery desktop, which we were trying to use before this, unfortunately, we didn't get it quite working. Um, the boundary desktop will uh, will sort of take away these host IDs, so you don't have to put them put them in yourself. Um, we have to identify the host by host ID because we're using the terminal here. But this That's will allow the stuff you sent me early yes. on. Yes. So, so which one. one? The first one. Yep. Okay. Let's do the first one. So we're just targeting um, the host ID. In this case, it is 10.0.1.161. Is it thinking about it? It acts like it's thinking about it. Come on, you can do it. Goes to show. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes things just don't go as, as what you plan. <sighs> That's okay, though. Uh, Do we want to hop back to desktop and see if we'll have better luck there? Uh, I don't know if we'll have better luck, but we could try it. <laughs> Why, not? It's, Why not? It's not going Maybe. well today, folks, right? Now, I it's, don't know what's going on today. This is the nature of things, right? Yeah, this is the way. This is the way. Okay. In the meantime. Next. Like I said, unfortunately, this is one of those streams that, you know what, some things, everything, sometimes everything goes great, and then other times everything just doesn't work. <laughs> okay, we'll make that bigger and hope it works. Um, hmm. hmm. It's not letting anybody go in today. Well, Let's see. you know. It happens. Guess guess we're all sus in our hoodies. We're all we're all just having a hard time today. Um, you know what I might do? I might just reset the worker because usually what happens when this when this happens, our worker is a little off. So stand by, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and kill the command on terminal as well. Yeah. Is this something people are going to want want to watch, or? Um, you know, it's not very it's not very fun. It's mostly just. <laughs> <laughs> I enough. mean, do people? I, I'll let the I'll let the chat decide. Do you want to watch me use some Terraform, uh, uh, to reset these things? I mean, you know that we could talk. We could do that. I mean, if people are interested, <laughs> I'll let the folks decide. Um, mm. Yay, boats! Otherwise, we can I can multitask and answer questions while we're doing this. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll yeah. Not okay. Prepared. So I'll stop sharing my screen. You know, it's okay. You can just take it off the stage. Hold on. Okay. You can keep your keep your share though. Um, uh, I just killed it anyway. Oh, uh, okay. That works too. <laughs> um, kill it all. Kill it. <laughs> it's fine. Where It'll be is? Fine. Where is the? Um, so one of the questions is why should one use Vault when all cloud providers offer Key Vault to integrate necessary resources? How does Vault benefit in terms of both pricing and security measures? So I think that it is 
it's all a dependent. It's dependent on what your um, what your plan is, right? Like whether or not you want to um, commit to your cloud provider and you want to use all the integrations that your cloud providers offer, right? Um, which is it's great. You know, I think that if you are committed to a specific cloud provider and you want to use all of the integrations available, and that's the benefit of having uh, using a cloud service provider's um, secrets management mechanism, then it works out really well. Um, the problem, though, is when you uh, the problem happens is when is when you um, try to move across multiple clouds, right? And you have secrets that you're sharing across multiple clouds. Um, it becomes a little bit harder to justify keeping your um, secrets in one cloud and then managing it across the three separate because that means three separate audits, you know, three separate mechanisms. If you have on-prem secrets versus uh, cloud secrets, then things get a little bit complicated too. So you might decide from a security standpoint uh, or as a security measure, you might decide that you want to audit everything in one place. You want to manage your secrets in one place, in which case you can use Vault, which is an interface that you can deploy across all of these different cloud providers and on-prem uh, and manage your secrets there. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. But there's a merit. I think there is a merit to saying that you you want to just stick with a specific cloud provider. And in terms of pricing, I think that also heavily depends on what kind of deployment that you're you're looking at as well. Um, if you're trying to deploy um, your your own vault and you do the community edition, um, well, you could say you could argue that the cost is whatever your cost is of just running the infrastructure, right? Plus the effort that you take to manage it as a team. You also have HCP available, HCP uh, Vault available to you, and in terms of pricing, that's a little bit different as well. Okay, Melissa, it turns out it works just fine now. So I'm just going to resend you the list of hosts. So one second. Okay. Uh, while I continue explaining this, but um, you you have the cost if you do community edition, you run it yourself. It's the cost of the infrastructure um, plus you know whatever efforts you have in your team to run it, and um, you can use HCP Vault, which are, is our cloud offering uh, of Vault. Um, you can also use that. Uh, the pricing there is also going to be different depending on your needs and requirements. Um, but it means you don't have to run Vault yourself and you can do things across multiple regions and things like that. And you get performance replication uh, as, uh, as well as disaster recovery. Um, and then there's the enterprise version if you want to run it yourself still and run it across multiple clouds and run it across multiple regions. Is the community edition now HA? Um, no, it is not fully HA in the sense that if you wanted, you can set it up HA like the setup we're going to show today. Um, however, you can't really do, let's say, performance replication, which is the uh, the thing that people who are scaling Vault to a massive size are looking at. Um, performance replication means that you have multiple Vault clusters and you can replicate secrets information across all of those clusters. Um, right now, you can do HA, with, I say heavily with quotes in the community edition, if you create one vault cluster to rule it all, um, which some people do, some people don't. Some people do manual mechanisms to um, do their kind of like their own replication in the community edition across clusters as well. Um, but if you kind of want this out of the box, then uh, you have to go to the cloud edition or the enterprise edition. OK, Melissa. One second. Just let's see here. There we and go. for those who were uh, carefully watching my my fiddling, um, it was not the worker. It was that I did not update my host catalog. <laughs> so that was my fault there. Okay, so now I'm in. I'm going to change this host ID to one of the new ones. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, anyone, or is there a specific one? Any like? one of them, as I'm long as we can keep track of one. which one we started. Yeah, we'll just start with the first one then. I'll make it easy. Okay. Uh, Boom. Yay! <gasps> Yay! Okay, if you can clear, I think our heads are in the wrong uh, spot, unfortunately. We're going to move those to side by side, unfortunately. Um, okay. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. What a time. It. What a time. Um, so if you pseudo sue, pseudo space sue, and I think someone says pseudo space sue space dash. 
because you know, well, why not? Let's let's do that. Okay. Um, if you do system CTL status vault, um, I took whatever we did last week and I took it and I automated it into Terraform. So the state of where we were at was basically the state of where we got uh, in Terraform, and you know, I put it back into. Um, put it back into here. There is one exception. We had some struggles with the T with MTL, uh, well not MTL, sorry, with TLS, uh, the TLS config last week, because we needed to generate our own certs, or we could use whatever vault auto generated because we're doing uh, an HA setup. I generated us a self-signed cert. So for those who okay. are watching, I generated us a self-signed cert. It is getting passed to all the vault servers. This means that I don't have to copy the, the, um, the serve the self signed cert that was auto generated across from one server to another. Basically, all of them have the same certificate because I generated it outside of Vault. Um, so the big difference is that Melissa, if you go ls um, slash opt slash Vault dot d, I think yeah Vault dot d slash tls slash actually I think that's it tls right no. What was the what was the directory? I think it's opt vault TLS maybe opt vault Etsy vault .dtln. I can't remember which folder we had. Oh yeah, TLS. Yeah. So if you look at TLS, there's the certificate authority as well as the um, server certificate and the server private key. Server certificate private key. So all of these things are already preloaded. So if you want more details on how this is set up, I we will talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but the important thing. Um, is that they're already preloaded so we don't go through this process again. Um, so Melissa, the first thing we're gonna do uh, in, in the HA mode is that we are, are on one vault server, right? Um, so now it is, if you do vault status. Like, uh, yeah, just Yeah, status. status. Okay. Kind of what we did before. Um, oh, well, no. you know, the certificate's not uh, signed, so um, we're going to do this command, which I will send to you, or actually I'll do this. Uh, if you go export space and in all caps, vault underscore CA cert equals no caps lock now. Um, yep. You're going to do the slash opt slash vault slash TLS slash uh, ca dot cert ca dot crt boom yep so this means that it will point to the self side cert and now if you do vault status you'll see that Look now at that. No it's so message. pretty so we are doing this properly last week we did skip verify which you're not really supposed to do so this time we are actually setting the ca um and you'll notice that the it is not initialized right initialized is false and sealed is true which means that we haven't last week when we started when we started up we ran vault operator in it um yep. to initialize and then we started to unseal um so before you run vault operator uh <laughs> unseal um, yeah. there we're not we have to do this across three servers um which is a little a little challenging um you can automate this actually well uh, i'll talk uh, i'll explain to melissa about the automate the how to automate this uh, after this, but um, because we're doing this manually right now, I don't think we want to be copying three different keys across three different servers. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a vault operator init, but space after that, don't don't hit enter, init space dash key dash shares. Like that? Yep. Equals one. Space dash key dash threshold. equals one. Okay, so Melissa, what do you yeah. think this does? <laughs> okay, so if I had to guess, that means we only have to copy one key. Yep, that's correct. So it means that it will generate one key share. So instead of the five that we saw before, it will generate only one, and then we're going to only need one to unseal vault. Ooh. Yeah. So this is another one of those don't do this in production commands. Right. Don't do this in production. <laughs> All right. So yeah. can I hit enter now? Yes, you can hit enter now. Good. The red button's calling my name. Yeah. Um, now, but because we don't want to lose this, we got to copy the root and the uh, everything else that <laughs> comes out of it. So okay. yeah, we got to yeah. copy that one unseal key because that's the only one we got. 
yeah. and the root token. All right. So I'm going to put that in the notes file if um, the Mac will cooperate here. And I thank you folks for putting questions in chat. I promise we will aggregate them and answer them at a good stopping point. I promise. <laughs> we're we're also gonna murder these keys after after the show. Yeah. Like, so don't yeah. don't share your keys on screen normally. Yeah. yeah. And stuff. Um yeah, and also these vault servers, the reason why we're using boundary is that actually these vault servers are on private networking. So <laughs> it's not that easy to get to. Um okay. Uh, there is a good question. So someone asked, uh, you don't have to initialize to enable HA. HA is already true. Yeah, you don't have to because the HA config comes out of the config. So um, Melissa, if you could uh, VI the Etsy vault, vault.hcl, vault.d.vault.hcl file. Yeah. Um, we've already configured a couple things. We'll talk about retry join, retry join later. Um, I'm not going to explain that right now. Um, but once you say storage raft, HA mode is enabled by default um, as long as you're not starting things up, right? Um, but there is an HA there is an HA stanza. Um, if you want to be really clear about it, there is an HA uh, directive that you can add as a block to config, and you can add more config to it. Um, but in our case, it is already going to be enabled by default because that's a default. Um, that is a default configuration. So for the sake of making it a little bit easier to read, we don't have that in here. But um, storage raft is enabled, and you'll notice node ID is set and everything else. OK, so um, let's exit out of this. So uh, the HA is a configuration. HA enabled is a configuration. Um, it's part of the, as well, part of the storage type raft, but um, HA is part of the configuration. It's not going to be an indicator of whether or not you have set up HA fully or not. So last week we did technically have an HA server, but we just had one server and it's not actually architecturally correct um, or proper. So here we are. Um, so we have the vault operator init. And now if you do a vault status again, Melissa, Look at that. It's initialized. Yeah, it's initialized, but it's still sealed. So, Melissa, how do you unseal it? <laughs> uh, is it vault operator unseal? Yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, typing. Just boom. OK, now I go back to that stuff I copied. Yeah. While you're copying and unsealing. Um, Question in chat, shouldn't a distinct three no a three distinct node setup be table stakes for any cluster software tool? Vagrant file could be one way to have a common set of tutorials. Yeah. Um there are some tutorials. Yeah, there are some tutorials that we have that do that do use um vagrant files and things like that. Uh so this in this case for, for Melissa's learning, um, we are trying to do things uh, on a cloud uh, service provider and we'll probably build this over time. But yeah. Three distinct node setup. I think that's the common concern I get a lot from folks who are trying to learn Vault or trying to learn console or trying to learn anything um, for cluster software. They're like, I learned it locally, but like it doesn't actually map to all the problems that I encounter when I try to configure it for production. Um, so this is our way of trying to learn all of those weird, quirky nuances. All right, so we have uh, initialized, true, sealed, false. Yes, we yes. have. And you'll notice that the HA mode is currently on standby. If you do um, vault status again, um, you'll notice that it will change to active. Um, what this means is that it has been voted as a leader server. Um, we're going to introduce a new command. Uh, if you go to, if you type in vault operator, um, operator members. <laughs> I had to think for a second. Oh. Oh, wait, we didn't set our vault address, did we? Did we set our vault address? No, OK. I don't um, think we did. 403 is um is we didn't set our root token. So if you could copy the root token. Yes. Vault, we have to have to do vault token. Um, OK, root token. Boom. I left. <laughs> three single, single node, three different ports of something that should be banished. Yeah. That is also true. It's not very it's not very helpful sometimes. <laughs> All right. So you said vault. Uh, no, if you do export um, on oh. export right, space, right, right, right. and then in all caps, vault underscore token. 
So there's a couple environment variables you can set all the time. And these are the ones that um, are common to the Vault CLI, um, including the Vault token, Vault underscore token, Vault underscore ADDR, and then Vault underscore, if you have CA cert, there's also other ones too. So now if you do Vault operator members, you'll be able to see that there are, um, there's one member. <laughs> That's it. Uh, 10, yeah, 10.0.2.245. Um, a couple of important things is that it's the active node. So you see active node true. And the important thing we need to copy from this is the API address. So if, if Melissa, you can copy that API address. Um, the API address is very important to us because that is how we're going to join other vault servers to this one. Um, so we need that address saved. So once you have a leader, um, you will save that server address there. Uh, the API address. Um, if we scroll back to the uh, terminal, you'll Indeed. notice there's a cluster address. So and after we've joined another server, uh, they all communicate over 82, uh, the raft address communicates over 8201. So that's what you'll see there. That's why there's a cluster address. Um, so the, the, overall, <laughs> the overall focus right now is that we have one server um, and that is pretty much it right now. We're going to manually join a second server. Um, and this is where things get a little interesting. So we're going to exit out of this one. <laughs> uh, we don't need this one right now. And then, Melissa, if you can choose your, oh, uh, yeah, exit out of that one too. Yeah. Yeah. If you can choose your second server. Okay. So yeah, just come out again, host. new host. Yeah, so if you're keeping track, anybody's looking, we went into 10.0.2.245. We're going to go into a second server now. We're doing um, 12 now. Yeah, we're doing 12. 0.0.12. Indeed. Is okay. there any reason you wouldn't initialize with one key if you're implementing auto unseal? Um, if you're implementing auto unseal, you could use you know multiple keys. Auto unseal means that it will just store the keys for you in, in somewhere. And, so if you're using auto unsealed, then this, this process isn't really necessary. I mean, you, you know, I would say initialize with a couple of different, initialize anyway, you would still initialize anyway and auto unseal handles all of that. Um, so it's better just to go um, do multiple keys if you can, but it's there's no real break glass way either of getting out of auto unseal necessarily. You can migrate between a manual seal and an auto unseal, I believe, but I don't think there's a break class where you can just um, unseal. Uh, vault status, uh, system CTL status vault, sorry. Ah, uh, yes, backwards. The other one's vault status. Okay, so you'll notice vault is running on this, um, but nothing has happened. <laughs> um, if you do vault status, uh, You'll also get the same certificate issues. So I'm going to leave you to configure the certificate, CA cert. Uh, wait a second. So this is this is export? Yep. Yeah, so it's vault underscore CA cert. Oh, OK. Yeah. So anytime you're configuring something related to the Vault CLI, it'll always start with Vault underscore. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And then it's ops vault mm -hmm. TLS. Yeah. And then ca.cert. Yeah. Nice. OK. And so if you notice Vault status, it is initialized, false, sealed, true. Nothing has happened yet with this. Now, do not uh, do not initialize because the, the minute you initialize um, your standby, what do they call standby server? So if you have a group of three, you have one that is the active or the leader, and then you have the other two, which are standby nodes. Um, if you initialize what you're intending to be a standby node, it, standby node, it's indicating that it's actually a leader. So we don't want to do that. Um, okay. It will initialize its own cluster, so we don't do vault operator init on the standby nodes. Okay. Um, we do something else entirely, uh, which is vault operator raft join. And then you're going to put that lovely uh, 
API address that you captured from the leader. So your active node or the API address you got from your vault server um, or your vault leader, that's the one that you're going to want to copy paste into vault operator raft join. And what raft is, is basically pointing to the raft backend, right? And saying, okay, we're going to all join everything together. Okay, so Ooh. we're going, yep. Okay, so this is not this is not ideal. Um, we have failed to join raft cluster and failed to get raft storage. Um, basically, what the API it's trying to join right the uh, join to the vault server the main one that you've already initialized, but it can't do it. Uh, and there's no error message. This tripped me up the first time I did this. Uh, the problem is actually to find the problem, you have to go back to the original vault server. So Melissa, I hate to tell you this, but you're going to either exit out of this. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to go back to the other one. Yep. Look at that. Uh huh. This is why we have a history. And we could, I think we'll probably open multiple. So oh, dude. yeah, I did that wrong. Next time we'll probably open multiple tabs, but for now it's fine. Um, so if you do system CTL status vault, um, if you look, and why we're looking at the status vault is because we're looking for the vault logs. Any, you could also do journal CTL or whatever um, if you wanted to. Uh, I guess it already rolled around. So if you could do journal CTL space dash fu space vault. I know you laugh every time we say, <laughs> but hey, you'll remember yeah, that's it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah. So Thanks, there's not much information here, I guess. Oh. Okay. Um, we'll just exit out of this. Basically, you see a lot of TLS handshake errors, and effectively, what ha what's happening is that it needs to know what the certificate is. Um, it exit. So the reason why you see a lot of TLS handshake errors is that. Um, there is a load balancer and then your other server that you're trying to join and it doesn't have the correct certificate. So that's why it's saying you don't have the correct certificate. You can't register. So that's why when it comes back with a 500 on your standby, it's basically saying I can't join. You have to look at your vault server for the original vault server that you created as the active one. Look in the logs um, and they'll usually tell you it will usually tell you I, you, I just can't add this. Um, node because the certificate doesn't match um, or the certificate is not what I expect. So we have to configure the certificate on the other server, on the standby server. So this is what tripped me up the first time I ever did this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a bunch of information about the certificate. Um, this is why I created the certificate outside of um, the outside of the how do I put this outside of the um outside of the vault server yeah so that way it just loads the same certificate so what we're going to do now um is we are going to type vault operator raft dash dash help uh raft sorry raft join dash dash help okay So the important thing is that we have to configure leader CA cert, leader client cert, and leader client key. OK. And that will all point to the, the um, files in vault opt, or sorry, opt vault TLS, right? Goodness. Slash opt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. TLS slash CA dot CRT. Yep. And then dash, yeah, leader dash client dash cert equals <laughs> ball TLS. <laughs> Uh, I think this one's tls.crt. And then and, the key? Yep. And then dash leader. Yeah, this, this is the painstaking part. Um, you might be asking, the folks in chat who are more familiar with well, it might be asking, why are we doing this manually? Because we're learning. 
Um, <laughs> So we'll get to the, the whole easier way to do this, because if you can imagine this doesn't scale well, um, if you have lots and lots of vault servers that you want to add, this does not scale well. Um, okay, so now you're going to do space and then the HTTP API that is associated with the, sorry, the API for the uh, original. Okay, already has that. Yep. yep. All right, Look so let's see. Oh, I think we have to reset CA cert again. Ah, uh, yes. We have to set our CA cert. Um, if people are curious, I loaded the same certs across all three servers. So, uh, oh, unable to find any PEM data in certificate input. Did we point to the wrong directory? Hmm. Oh, right. Sorry. If you go back to off operator raft join. Oh, okay. Uh, if you go back to that, um, it's add at before every opt. Um, it is not using the path. It, ex it wants the actual data from the file. So it's not a file path. It is the actual data coming from that file. So we have to add at. Yeah. At okay. the, uh, and then the next one, the next opt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Good. So. Okay. Yeah, we have to add at to every one of these. Um, if you're reading from a local file, uh, it, this command does not accept file path. It, it You need to tell it to read data from that file path. So there and we then are. Boom. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yay, so it's joined. Um, if you really, OK, so if you want to do a vault status, OK. All right. So you notice still that it sealed. is initialized. True. Yes. But it is still sealed. Yes. So now you must unseal it with the key from the original vault server. OK. And that is here. And we're going to be doing that. And now, mm -hmm. uh, vault status again to make sure it mm -hmm. is on seal. Yep. Now, do I still have to do something with that root token? Um, you do have to do something with the root, to root token. So just do export vault underscore token again. Let's set it, and we'll just look at something else, right? So we'll use it to look at a couple things. Come on, sleepy Mac. Ooh. Now what are we looking at? Yeah. So let's do vault operator members, right? Ah, uh, yes. That will show us whether or not we have a set of raft members that Look at that. There's two. Yay. OK. So there are two uh, vault servers now. Um, one is the active. That is the original one, the 10.0.2.245. And then we are currently on the standby, which is the 10.0.0.12. Um, standby, it means that it's not uh, it, standby. You can write. I believe you can write to standbys. Um, as far as I recall, you can do rewrite commands to the standbys, but in terms of who is going to make have the final say on what is the correct data that's going to go into Vault, what's the you know official source of truth, um, that's going to be the active one, right? So it's kind of like saying if Melissa and I disagree on something, ultimately the Melissa is going to have the authority because she is the active Vault server. Um, <laughs> That is like the very simple way of explaining it. Raft can be kind of complicated. Um, uh, Cole and I tried to get deeper on it on getting into console, and it got really confusing. So if anybody is actually very, very, very interested in the deep internals of Raft, uh, I highly recommend like the Secret Life of Data. There's a nice little diagram and visualization of explaining how it all works. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, highly recommend that. But um, we have another server to configure. Yes, 
But uh, we're gonna take a pausing point for a second. Because okay. we manually, I'm just going to recap quickly. We manually configured, uh, we manually configured our active node, and then we manually configured one standby node. Um, again, this is something that you'll do if, let's say, you need to recover or you uh, a vault server somewhere, or you want to manually add a standby for some reason. Um, this is the command that you'll need to issue. Um, some things that I would say is that if you are using TLS, um, you will want to pass in the certificates. Otherwise, you won't really be able uh, to add that member, uh, add a standby member. The other thing that I will warn you is that if you're using TLS with Raft, um, there are a couple important things you need to configure if you're bringing your own certificate. Um, if you're bringing your own certificate, um, you'll need to set the um, subject alternative names, subject alternative names in the certificate um, to either reflect the correct IPs that will be joining um, your standby node, or your active node, or the correct domain. So um, this is something to keep in mind. If you are trying to do this manually and you have TLS enabled for your vault servers, um, keep in mind that it won't add random standby nodes. You have to tell the certificate. When you set up the certificate, you have to tell it which IP addresses to allow. Um, in my case, uh, because this is just for non-production and learning purposes, our certificate accepts all the IP addresses in my private network range. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't do this at home. Well, you know, don't do this at home. Um, although, you know, it's okay if you decide you want to use your own self sign cert. Someone did ask a great question, which is if the vault servers are on a private network and there's no external access, why TLS? I mean, I know TLS, but why? Uh, and that's a fair question. I mean, if you're on a private network and you don't have any external access, um, you might be able to say you can get away without having TLS or encryption between communication. Um, it, encryption, sorry, communication between vault servers don't need to necessarily be encrypted. Um, just be on the safe side, because again, this is your credentials um, being transmitted over the wire. If someone does manage to hop in and compromise something on your private network, um, because let's be realistic, there are people there, you know, there are ways that you can still get into a private network. It's um, happened. It's happened, right? And you, you, you don't want people listening in on those credentials being transmitted or being replicated and, and communicated across uh, vault servers and things like that. So you still want to probably enable TLS anyway. Um, and it's important just to say, like, is that part of your security posture? If your vault servers are on a very, very private network and there's no possible way to get to them, then you know, maybe it's not as much of an issue. But still, you probably want to enable TLS anyway. Um, it is easier to disable it, but it's harder to enable it later on. So if you enable it earlier on, which is why Melissa and I did not start with a, uh, without TLS enabled, um, or it's why we didn't start with TLS disabled in the first place was because in all likelihood, you'll want to enable it when you first start your vault server. Um, the other thing is that, uh, yes, yeah, so the certificates do make it a little bit harder. Um, and that's why I want to at least point out that if you have struggles with the certificates, um, check out whether or not the certificate that you issued is, uh, is allowing an IP address from that standby node to register, um, or if it's ad it has the correct domain. Um, so those are some important things that you have to know. Lisa, any questions up to this point for you from you? Sure. So when does this upgrade version come into play? Mm. When you decide you need to upgrade, um, and if you decide to upgrade, uh, you don't really want to have nodes with different multi with different versions um, for a couple of reasons. There are some, um, some things that maybe are just not backwards compatible. So you don't always want to um, subvert, like I think what we, what we call subversions um, are probably okay, um, but you probably want to upgrade uh, minor versions at the same time. So... Um, you want to be careful about what uh, what compatibility you have across um, vault servers. Some most vault versions, I believe, are backwards compatible. But if you do an in-place upgrade, for example, um, you will do an upgrade and you will see this upgrade version change across different nodes and you'll have to make sure to roll them out to um, the rest of the nodes. Maybe we'll do that as an exercise. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Okay, I will make a list. So far, our list has expanded because last week we got, we got a bunch of people asking about Kubernetes. Uh, and then now I guess we probably need to talk about upgrades. Yes, yeah, um, so Adventures in Scope Creep. It's going to be great. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get, we're trying to get through the basics first and then yes. <laughs> go through all the weird, all the like really weird edge cases. Um, because like we're, we're not even at authentication methods. All right, so now let's add a third one. Um, we're gonna do the third one a little bit differently. So we did this all manually, right? Um, we added them manually. Uh, and that works for maybe one or two servers if you're just doing it um, because you want to add it to your server pool. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't work if you have like five, six, seven, eight, nine servers, right? Oh. Yeah, so, uh, and plus if you are in an auto scaling group like we're in, um, hint, hint, uh, the, if, for those who are more familiar with AWS, um, we, I don't have these statically defined, right? They're not like instance one, instance two, instance three. I'm using an auto scaling group. So I could add another server by just clicking or increasing the, the, the auto scaling group. Um, and if one instance goes horribly awry, then a new one will start up. Uh, it will terminate and then it will, uh, the auto scaling group will start a new one up, right? Um, and the result is that it's, it's very automated. Um, you can't go in every time to one of these instances and do this, you know, set of commands like vault operator ref join, right? So there are easier ways to do it, um, which is, it's very exciting. Uh, and there is something called auto join. And what? Yeah, I know. Uh, most of the HashiCorp tools, I guess, have some kind of auto join capability. Um, let me just copy this and make sure it is the correct link so people get it in the chat. Because <laughs> I don't want to be like, oh, this is the wrong link. Um, let me pull this up. But there is an, a, there's a way that you can, you can tell it to automatically join um, without necessarily, let's see, starting everything up again. So I'm going to drop this and then post it on the screen. Um, okay, I'm committing a no-no, so. Okay. There we so, go. All right. <laughs> okay. So this is the, I, I put the link and then I'll, uh, I'll put up the, um, I'll put up the actual. Okay. So you should see that there is a uh, document, some documentation on integrated storage. Um, but the important part of this is that you will want to set a retry join in any automation scenario that you're doing. Um, you don't want to just be like manually add my server um, every single time if it, it starts up. You could do that. You could do vault operator uh, raft join every time if you're using the integrated storage backend. Um, but there's an easier way to do it. Um, and that is called re the retry join stanza. The retry join stanza um, is a way for you to start up a server if it's immutable, meaning that if you plan on deleting the server and creating a new one every time um, and you want to bring it back up, uh, then you will want to use retry join in your configs, right? Because then anytime you start up that server again, it will retry and join the active vault server wherever it is. So retry join is a very helpful stanza. You'll find it in a lot of different uh, HashiCorp tools because a lot of tools use Raft. <laughs> so um, when it retries, it retry joins, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You could tell it a specific um, set of uh, addresses. So you can tell it retry join leader API address. Um, you could also, uh, what we're going to do is do auto join. Um, cloud auto, uh, sorry, cloud auto join means that the um, the vault server that you're starting up is going to need access to your cloud provider. In our case, we have access from our instance to AWS to get a list of other instances. And the reason why is that auto join processes a lot of different tags from your cloud provider. Um, so it will read the list of instances from your cloud provider. Um, and then it will automatically discover the IP address for uh, the instances given a set of tags, um, which is, you know, you're thinking to yourself, really, uh, is that going to work? Um, so I have it kind of half pre-configured and we'll actually take a look at that. So Alyssa, a good yeah. question from Sean mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. um, the scaling down of auto scaling groups. How does Raft handle a dead node when the auto scaling group scales down? Yeah, so Raft will have a setting that you can uh, you can organize a setting on uh, on your Raft config that um, pings for whether or not there is a uh, update interval, right? Um, so basically, it will tell you whether it will say, okay, if this node I can't find it in here, but if this node has uh, is not is this this echo 
you'll notice there was an echo command or not echo echo parameter in the raft um, list. But if you know if it notices that uh, it's not coming back for a certain window of time, um, then it will assume it's a dead node and prune. Um, you can do manual vault. Sorry, you can do manual raft pruning. So you can prune it by yourself with the raft command. Um, if you know it's going to be a dead node, but in terms of auto scaling, it will automatically um, ping those nodes. And after a certain period of time, if it doesn't get anything back, then it will prune it. Um, so it's kind of a, a sort of something you'll have to tune. If you know something might be a problem with your node, um, you know, you might say, okay, I'll, I'll do it a little longer, but um, I can't remember the exact timing parameter and where it is in here. But, um, you know, there are a lot of different things too. You'll notice that in this documentation, there's talking about autopilot. This is more for uh, enterprise version, but um, there's also a number of uh, retry join commands that you can also include. So you can um, set those up. You can do it all manually. If you do the vault operator raft command, you can do a lot of these things as sort of like a break glass situation if there's a dead node and it's not being pruned. All right. So before I move off of this, uh, actually, we, no, Melissa, well, let's share your screen because I'll show the auto join configuration. All right, let's see here. Let's go back to, yep. let's log into the third node, the third and final node. Yes, indeed. I should have copied that as I was here already, but here we are. Oh. Mm. Thinking about it. Oops. I assume we're still um, doing a couple commands like system CTL vault status vault. Oh, look at that. Do we still do the CA commands or are we? Yeah, we still need to do the okay. CA commands. That's the right one? Yep. Awesome. That should be it. OK, what now? OK. So let's look at the vault config and at c vault.de vault.hcl. Here we are. OK. So that's the retry join stanza that we briefly glossed over before, and I didn't really say too much about. Um, so you can put under storage draft a retry join stanza. And what this will tell it is that if you uncomment it, it will tell the vault server upon startup, you need to be looking for um, these attributes. And that is going to be where you find your leader. Um, if you don't find these attributes, then initialize yourself as a leader. Um, so then you have auto join and we're using AWS. So we're looking at a couple different tags, right? Um, you're looking at the provider AWS. There are a number of other cloud providers available. So uh, you can also specify Azure or you can specify GCP if you're on that. Um, you have region US East one, which is where we're running. And I'm doing this based on um, tags. So I'm doing it based on uh, name, getting into vault, which is the tag that is uh, I've labeled for all of our assets that are for the stream. Um, so what this will do is that retry join will check and see if there are ports available for it to join um, in a given AWS instance uh, based on the tags of those AWS instances. And if there is uh, 8200 available, then it will join via HTTPS. That's where you get the auto join scheme. Um, the other thing, a couple. Yeah, so a couple other things that we've set up is that the leader TLS server name. Um, this is a way for you uh, to not have to put IP addresses in your in your certificates. <laughs> um, 
uh, one of the nuances to auto join and and joining uh, raft join by extension is that um, if you're doing it manually, you probably have it manually and you're pointing your um, leader API address to an explicit IP address, you probably will have to put all of the IP addresses that you think are going to be valid um, into that self-signed certificate, right? Um, or in a certificate somewhere. Now, if you have a proper certificate that's not self-signed and it is linked to a domain, um, to uh, you can put in that domain, right? So the leader TLS server name is something that um, you can configure in, the, in your certificate. Um, that if it matches this uh, domain name, then you know it's valid. Uh, it's valid. It's a valid node to be added. Its identity is valid to be added. Um, so this is something though that you will only need to. Um, you can only do if you if you have the domain name set up. Um, in our case, we don't have the domain name set up, but because this is internal, it's a self insert It does actually work. Um, but if you are to do this end to end, right, and you were to do this properly where you're assigning, um, let's say vault, uh, vault zero, vault one, vault two, vault three dot server.com um, that you may, you would wanna make sure you have that domain name um, that is resolvable. One thing I will say is that if you are running this on Kubernetes, this is actually what it's doing. Um, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes assigns domain names to its services. Um, the vault server, if you're running the vault server on Kubernetes, what it will do is it will assign uh, an internal Kubernetes domain name that is like vault zero dot vault dot service dot whatever, uh, or, sorry, the uh, dot whatever the namespace is and stuff. Um, and the raft raft will resolve based on um, this leader TLS server name here. So this leader TLS server name is very important to configure if you want to do this by auto join. I don't know if that that explanation was garbled, Melissa, but let me know if there's like a better way. I I think I've got it. <laughs> we'll see. You know, if you, you know have what? questions, put them in the chat though. Yeah, do put them in the chat. I know like garbling, I, I'm garbling things today. So let's, hold on. Before I move forward, I will show you, show the folks what, what is involved. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can share my screen, this, this thing. You don't have to unshare yet, Melissa. It's okay. You can just leave. yeah. We can throw it backstage or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, entire window. Um, okay. So when I configure the certificates, I configure them using um, I configure them using Terraform because you know it's easier. Um, so one of the things that you'll have to do is that in let's say the common name, um, there's my uh, leader TLS server name, in this case, vault.server.com. Um, under the DNS, this is where the SANS, right? These are subject alternative names that you uh, want the certificate to be requested for. So um, under the DS DNS names, I have this uh, listed. So this would be the vault.server.com, which means that the certificate will accept um, a node, will accept or authenticate a node if it has this correct DNS name as well as localhost. This localhost is necessary for the server to authenticate itself, basically, um, authorize itself. Um, the alternative is that if you are manually adding nodes and you're not doing with auto join, well, you'll have to do this whole IP address situation where you have to add every IP address under the sun that is valid for your vault nodes. Does that help a little bit? A little bit better? Yeah. Okay. For me. Yeah. Please respond in the chat if you need more clarification. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to stop the share and we'll pull back this one. Okay. So now that we've uncommented this, basically with auto join, it's going to read every single instance that we have and its tags and then find the instances with the proper tags and check if it is, it's got a vault API enabled uh, over HTTPS. That's the sum of what auto join is going to do. And there was a great question in chat. The AWS instance needs special IAM policy to read the tags, right? And you are correct. Um, that is indeed the case. I will show you what that looks like. I think it's under vault server IAM. Um, there in the um, instance profile, I have a role attached and the role has uh, a policy that allows it to describe instances. So this means that it can go to AWS uh, using this IAM policy and describe the instances that are available. So you do need to add that. Um, and if you are on any other cloud, you will also have to allow the, the VM that you set up to have um, the policy to read the list of instances for those tags. 
Okay, we're good. Um, you could also alternatively um, read tags based on the auto scaling group, right? So auto scaling also has tags as well um, added to, to your instances. Um, so you may decide that you want to set a special, a special tag for your auto scaling group, and that is the one that you're going to look for. Um, you know, let's say in the AWS auto scaling tags, there's like AWS auto scaling group name or something, and you can pass the group name in. But just to make it easier, I just have name. All right. So let's go back to this. Um, Melissa, we are going to exit and save this. Yes. Um, and then we're going to restart Vault. So if you do system CTL restart Vault. Boom. And there we go. OK, so you notice that it restarted it. Um, and it's just telling you vault is on is it's just telling you vault is sealed. So if mm -hmm. you do vault status, not vault system CTL status, but yeah, vault oops. status. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that it is initialized true and sealed true. Look, we didn't have to copy paste the big command and pass in a bunch of certs yep. um, because we configured it, right? So this means that if you're in an auto scaling group, you could put this as part of user data or whatever, or however you initialize your node. Um, and all of that can be automated. So you don't have to specifically issue a bunch of commands. Um, however, it's still sealed. So now you got to unseal it. Now we did this with raft last time, yeah? But, uh, unseal, you just did vault operator unseal. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Someday, little Mac. There we go. So much excitement. Boom. Look at that. But now mm -hmm. we do a status and mm -hmm. it's unsealed. Yay. Yay. And if you do vault operator members. Do we need the root? Um, yeah, so that's export vault root. What was it? Well, oh, I'm gonna stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, you can do it, even if you look at the docs for token? it. Too. Yeah, vault underscore token. Okay, had to cheat a little bit. Boom. And now it works. Yay. And Yay. it's in an active. We're on this guy here. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it means it's active, but it's a standby node. So basically what it means is that it's active doesn't mean that whether or not it's up or down. Um, last echo, which is that parameter there, is where things are a little bit more important. Um, you know, it, if that last echo indicates that it's not alive anymore after a certain threshold, then it will prune the stale nodes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing that you'll have to keep an eye on, but if you are familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with, um, just generally the, the vault server, uh, architecture for the most part, as long as you see that last echo is up and running an indication that, you know, it's probably fine. It can connect to it. Um, there are, I'm going to pause. Are there any, there is a question in the chat. Okay. Um, We'll talk about ELBs in a second. Uh, we're going to go to DNS or console instead of tags. So, Melissa, if you pull up your um, config again. OK. Uh, is it opt? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, Etsy. Sorry. Etsy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, caps lock. Always a uh, winner. While we're doing this, what's the redundancy zone thing about? I think that one, let me check actually. I'm not gonna say I know that one. That might be an enterprise thing. Okay. Okay, um, to answer the question about can you use DNS or console instead of tax? The answer is yes. It wouldn't really be using auto join, I think. 
Um, I don't think you could use auto join for it. Uh, what you would basically do though is um, in retry join, there's a leader underscore uh, API address. Um, and what that means is that it will check for a leader API address of a possible leader node. That can be a, a load balancer. Um, so you can actually use that by load balancer. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm double checking right now if the supported providers are in uh, Cloud Go Discover and that is not. So console, you probably would have to do by DNS if you are using console for um, service discovery. Uh, but if you are using, let's say, just regular uh, a load balancer and it load balances to a set of servers, um, you can do uh, you can do leader underscore API address. And as long as you're configuring TLS server name, as well as um, the correct certificates related to that load balancer as well, uh, then it will join to that load balancer and you don't have to use auto join. Um, as for the second, uh, the first question, which was if you have an ELB, do you want a different cert or the same cert? Um, you'll want the same cert. Uh, so if you're bringing your own cert, um, you will have to either load that onto the load balancer somewhere. Um, and that means that you have to either, if you're using a AWS, then you have to load it into ACM, uh, which is actually what I did. So that part is the load balancer. There is a load balancer in front of these servers. Um, I'm going to send this to Melissa while I'll show my config. That might be easier. Okay. So Melissa, I'm going to send you the load balancer address. Um, so you have it, but I will add my config. All right. So let's see, we're going to just remove this for a second. Um, so if you're curious about some of these things, close off. Um, if you are looking at the load balancer, um, what I had to do was take my, uh, certificate and then load it into, um, ACM. So uh, uh, with the private import it into ACM, um, private key, certificate body, and the certificate chain. If you're using self-signed um, self certs, you have to import the certificate chain. Uh, or if you're bringing your own cert, right, and you're importing it into ACM. If you're using um, ACM because you actually own the domain, um, then this may not this may be less painful. You don't have to generate this all yourself. Um, so that's one thing you'll have to do. You will have to load a valid certificate um, with the same certificate authority into uh, ACM, and then you'll need to add it to the load balancer. So um, if you look at my listener, um, which is pointing to my vault server and forwarding to my vault server group, um, you will have to pass the certificate into the ELB in order for it to work properly. Um, that is the trick if you are trying to do uh, retry, if you're trying to do retry join in raft and you have, um, if you have TLS turned on, you will have to make sure that all of the certificates across the board are configured for your load balancer and for certificates. <laughs> I don't oh, like certificates. They're, they're, they're complicated. Wonderful. They're complicated. <laughs> um, okay. So I sent Melissa actually our load balance endpoint or endpoint with, um, with, uh, with, the vault UI up and running because you we did, did turn on the UI. So Melissa, if you would like to go to that URL that I sent you. Uh, where'd you send it? <laughs> I think I put it through Slack. Oh, okay. I would be happy to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to do, I'm going to show this here. Um, we're going to bypass this because again, we used a self sign cert. So it's not, not a valid certificate authority. If you could zoom in a bit. So oh, yes, 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 yes. Oops. Try now. Okay. Yeah. So here we are. This is the, the Vault UI. Vault does have a UI. You can turn it on per server um, if you so desire. I see the question mark. <laughs> what question mark? I don't know. You had, did you want to say something? Oh, no, 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 no. I was showing all the different methods. Yeah. Okay, so this is the next sequence. Uh, so congratulations, Melissa. You've set up three uh, three servers, three vault servers. Yay. Yay. Um, you did it. You did one that had a manual join and the other with uh, a beautiful, oh, magical, join. automated uh, automated joining mechanism. Um, so you didn't have to pass in that leader API address. Um, yay. yay. Now we have three servers, one in each availability zone. And if one goes down, then the other two will take over. Um, 
you, now the question is, do you want to go into auth methods, which is the next set of things, or do you want to just play around and just and just remove one of these servers? <laughs> Up to I you. mean, I like breaking stuff as much as the next person. Um, how much time do we need for auth methods? Um we could set one up now or we could just wait to set one up at the next stream it's probably it might not be it might not be ideal to do it in the next 30 minutes because then policies are kind of associated with it so all right let's 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 break stuff okay let's go break stuff because uh someone asked a funny question which is can all nodes be rebooted simultaneously no no <laughs> because we are using raft um and we will explain a little bit more about that but uh let's go back to your terminal then yes um yeah okay so let's exit and then um let's go back to the to the leader to to our uh our active node um okay so to answer this question and i suppose right off the bat um can all nodes be rebooted simultaneously? And the answer is no, because we are using uh, Raft as integrated storage. Um, with Raft as integrated storage, it means at least one server must be an active node um, in order for the data to still exist, right? You can still back up the data by doing vault snapshot, uh, vault operator, operator snapshot, um, which we'll do another day uh, because I think we're not going to be able to do it in the 30 minutes. Uh, I don't have the the wherewithal to, to put myself through that right now um, because we're about to break stuff anyway. Uh, but you do want to back things up using uh, the operator snapshot and then that will allow you to restore if if the worst case scenario happens where all of your vault servers go down because the whole region goes down and you didn't back up across region, um, you do snapshot and you can restore the snapshot. Um, but ideally you would want to keep one vault server up as the active and then that way it can um, when you bring up the vault, other vault servers later, you can, you know, you'll be sure to be uh, replicating all that previous data in there. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to, um, you know, let's, okay, let's uh, first, uh, let's set the vault token there. Okay, it's the vault token. Yeah, always set your vault token. If you want to access the vault API, you generally have to always set up the vault token. Um, there are a couple endpoints that don't. You don't have to do this, like the status endpoint or the health endpoint. You don't have to do this. But if you want to get a list of members, for example, you do need to set up the vault token. All right. Nice. There okay. we go. So we have a list of members. We're currently on 10.0.2.245, .2 um, which is our active node. So that is the leader. Um, we are going to take down the leader. So we're going to do a uh, system CTL uh, stop vault. <laughs> but I'm sorry, everybody. Everybody's going to have a bit of a bit of a little anxiety around this. So we're just going to stop vault. Um, all right. And then we're going to go into one of the other machines. We really should have multi-tabbed this, but it's fine. Or the team must do it, but it's fine. We haven't, we're just not in the mood. Okay. So once more, uh, if we, yeah, if we do that and then we're going to set up vault CA, cert, et cetera, and the token. Yeah. Someone made a very good point. Auth would go with Kubernetes anyway. Yeah. So vault auth methods have a lot of kind of go hand in hand with other things too. So, um, but we're going to, we're skipping around in terms of some of the um, uh, CERT. CERT, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So let's see what happened. We stopped vault on our active. You'll notice that, well, the other one is active. It has no more. It is no more. So when someone asks what happens if there's like a dead node because of an auto scaling group, just scaling, downscaling, um, it recognizes that it does not exist anymore or it is not um, reaching back. So what you'll notice is that when you look at vault operator members, it will now have assigned a new active node, right? So that's at 0, 0, 0012. Um, there you go. 
And that is a, uh, and so yes, Sean pointed out that you can export a new vault address instead of logging into another machine. So yeah, you could actually export the vault address, but in this case, we didn't save our vault addresses. So um, we, we, we were not that intelligent about it. So we probably should save it. Um, but let's go back into the original node and let's bring up vault again and let's see what happens. <clears throat> Melissa getting a lot of practice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Command line practice. Leave. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll dump it into a script for the next time. Because <laughs> we won't do this. But this is just first. start vault, right? Uh, yeah. Start vault. Okay. So let's do vault status. Uh, okay. That's a ways away. So. Mm -hmm. So we started the node that we removed, yes. um, and you'll notice that it is sealed. Yay. So anytime you restart a node, remember, it seals. So now you have to unseal it in order for it to work. Yep. Yay. Only one key to copy. Yeah, exactly. This is why we did not do three keys this time, because... I think copying three keys nine times. That's great. Yeah, three keys. Yeah, so copying nine sets of keys and various things. It just it's not worth it. Look at that. All right. And so now if you do vault operator members. Ah, uh, typing. There we go. There you are. It's back. It is back. It's it not is. in charge in, anymore. No, it is not in charge anymore. That is correct. Because it went down. But, but it, it just joined and it's happy in the cluster. We didn't have to do much other than nope. unseal. Exactly. And, and that's one thing to note. Uh, the information is backed up right on the machine itself, right? So all of that metadata uh, about its raft, its ID, if you do vault operator raft list dash peers, I think, yeah, vault operator raft list dash peers. Uh, no space. Oh, yes, yes, yes. OK, so we'll tell you state as well, as well as voter. Voters, non-voters um, are more relevant for enterprise. Uh, but you'll notice that the IDs, right, because you didn't change your node ID or anything. You didn't change all of that information in terms of the raft data is still on the machine. Um, it can rejoin without any real incident. So if some for some reason or another, you, can't, you just can't connect to Vault anymore, or the Vault process itself doesn't um, start correctly on the node. Um, once you get it working again, it will join up with the data that is previously stored right um, on the instance. Now, if you removed this instance entirely uh, and you deleted it, um, well, it's all gone. Um, but a new machine, if you did add a new machine on this uh, and you used auto join or you used retry, you know, a retry join that it, it allowed it to uh, join up to the cluster, um, it will automatically join up to the cluster, just like the third instance that we had, right? So um, you can continue to grow your cluster in this way. But if you, for some reason, if your leader somehow goes down, it will just find a new leader and then rejoin again. That's that. I feel like that was less, less work than I thought. <laughs> so say I got really angry and decided to go into the data center virtual or otherwise or into abus and kill the network and and leave everything running but kill the network between these guys what would happen uh, that's a good question to be honest i think it could go a, a number of different ways the leader will the leader is still the one that if you can as long as the leader is still accessible right let's say you were still adding you were adding keys to it as long as the leader is still accessible outward you know from from your inbound request, then the leader will still write that data. Um, it just can't replicate that data across the other followers. Would the followers assume they were in charge? Do you, do you, do you run the risk of, of doing any kind of split brain stuff in the cluster or? Hmm, we could try it. Let's uh -oh. give it a try. Why not? <laughs> Let's break stuff. Let's break stuff. I love Let's break stuff. stuff. <laughs> I'm going to take the, uh, the suggestion in chat, which was to uh, delete the security group. So let me do that. <laughs> One second. <laughs> One second.
What's the worst that could happen? You know, this is, this is one of those things that like, I'm like, you know what, let's do it. I don't know the answer for sure. I'm pretty sure I can't find it in documentation somewhere. So we might as well just see what happens. Um, so raft, if let's say, let's take out 8201. We can't, I mean, I guess we could do 8200. So as well. So let me just edit inbound rules. Uh, let me delete those. Wait, hold on. I'm not going to show this on screen because it's an eight. It's just an AWS delete. I'm I'm not even going to bother trying to run Terraform for this right now, um, because it is a little bit more complicated than uh, a five oh five. I think that's the load balancer. I'm just double checking. Okay, F six D is load balancer. Security groups F six D is load balancer. So we are going to not remove the load balancer one, but we are going to remove the other two because I'm going to keep the load balancer one Save. So we'll assume that the load balancer is fine, but the rest are not fine. Um, and I, you know what? I'll share my screen just to show that I, we actually did remove these things. <laughs> Yay. See, thank you, chat, for, for being so supportive of us breaking things. <laughs> I appreciate this. Okay, um, so just as a quick thing, so people are just like, oh, you did, did you actually do it? Um, I have a security group for my vault server here um, and I have removed all the inbound rules um, except for the one from the load balancer and except for boundary to access it. So um, that's that, we'll do that. And to be clear, Rosemary was not expecting this. This is just me being a little chaotic saying, that's hey, okay. we've got 20 minutes, let's, let's mess around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're we're getting we're getting some predictions. Someone will say nothing will happen. Leader will stay as is. Uh, great. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, okay, Melissa, let's let's go back to your screen and let's do uh, operator members because I think that's probably a more accurate re reflection of what the current status is. So let's see. Uh, it's still a follower. Yeah. That that's if you do. Let's do um. Let's do vault secrets list. Let's 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 see. Can you can you still <laughs> chaos monkey? Yeah. Where? Okay. So there's still secrets. You can still access them. Let's put a secret in. Um, we can do vault KV. Now keep in mind we're trying to put a secret um, on a follower. So let's let's see what happens. Vault. KV. Oh yeah. Vault. Oh yeah. No, sorry. It... Vault secrets enable. Oh okay. Yeah. Don't forget. Vault secrets enable. I think it was. KV that we do, and the KV that's KVV one. If you do that, KV dash V two, without the space. Oh yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then let's check. Vault secrets list. Yeah, tail the logs. We should probably tail the logs. I don't know if we can open things up though. Uh. All right. Good enough. It's there. It's there. Um. System, let's 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 look at the logs. So journal ctl space dash fu space vault. Let's see what happened. Uh, just a bunch of TLS handshake errors. These are coming from the load balancer. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, this is from load balancer health checks. So we're gonna see a lot of this. But so far, nothing really that indicates that anything is immediately problematic. Um, okay. Let's exit out of this. Uh, and let's take someone else's suggestion. Let's set the vault address to one of the other vault servers. So let's export vault, uh, export space capital vault underscore ADDR equals. Uh, and then we'll let's pick the leader. So if you scroll up and let's pick the leader. Yeah, we can okay. table. Yeah. Hmm. This guy. Mm -hmm. Just... So we need the whole HTTPS address. So we need the Ooh, whole API. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. We've got the same token, so it shouldn't really matter. But just to see, let's do vault status. Because I did disable the security group. So theoretically, nothing should go through. Wahahaha. Ooh. Yeah, nothing going through. 
Um, so we can't see anything that's going on. Um, so let's exit out of that. Let's or control C. Command C. Yep. And then um, let's check the logs. Let's take someone's suggestion in chat. Journal CTL space dash XEF space. Oh gosh. <laughs> Hold on. XEF? Yep. Space dash U. Space vault. And then. Whoa. So uh, let's exit out uh, command C or control C, sorry, not command C. Yep. And then let's scroll up. I'm sure we'll find something in there. Uh, other than the TLS handshake errors, which again, apologize to everybody. <laughs> I saw something in there. I don't know what though. Ah, here we go. Entering standby mode. Well, that is a, it is a standby, so. Yeah. And I don't think that was the time 35. Yeah, that was like nine minutes ago, so. Yeah. I don't think that was, that That wouldn't be it. So nothing in the logs. No. Um, okay, so let's exit and let's go into the the leader that we, uh, let's go into that leader. I think it was the third host ID. Oops. <laughs> Let me just verify that that's the third host. It ID. was four. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, well, we could take out the handshake stuff. I agree. We could grab out of it, grab it all. But um, let's just do uh, oh, set the CA cert, set the token again. Yep. Uh, This, you know, we just killed the security groups. It's magical. <laughs> this is great. I appreciate that suggestion. Thank you, chat, for directing us into this. <laughs> into this. Very amusing. Here. All right. Okay. Okay. So it's still a leader. Um, let's actually do vault secrets uh, list, vault secret, secret, vault secrets list. Ugh. There we are. Well, what do you know? It's still, it, it still somehow made it in here. <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. I disabled okay. 8201 as well. <laughs> so I have questions too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure oh. I disabled 8201. Um, mm. You know what, though? It might be because it's actually going through the load. It's not going through the load balancer, is it? The third one was actually, let's check 1.236. Let's check the second host. I'm curious if it ended up making it to the second host. We're in 236. We are? I thought we were in two... No. Uh, go to 0012. 012. Somehow 0012 still got it, so... Two three six uh zero zero twelve is uh A N Y. Yeah, I didn't I did not delete the security group with the load balancer on it. So I could delete the load balancer security group. But we did check vault status and it didn't connect in to eighty two hundred on the leader, so it did disable it. Now, why it's going still working, I am very curious. I know. Eventually we'll we'll figure it out for, for the next one. We we were not we were not a hundred percent prepared to show three servers on this one. We I was like, oh, we could use the boundary desktop. And somehow the boundary desktop didn't hundred percent work with for us. Okay. Ah, removing a rule from security group will not close existing connections. So it might not close anything. It still might be 
Oh, okay. So, I mean, it may not be as, we might not be able to do this whole security group thing. Um, yeah, so it yes. probably didn't disconnect the connections. The only thing I can think of is like restarting Vault on the other one, on the other, on two of them, and keeping one up. And then that would disconnect. Okay. Hmm. hmm. How do we just, I mean, we could also just, let's see. Yeah, let's restart the non-leaders. So none, the, the, the leader. Uh, okay, the yeah. non-leaders. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so let's exit. No living then, on the edge. Yeah, yes. we're, we're not going to live life that far on the edge. Uh, go to 4FAU. And then we're going to stop or restart vault, restart vault. And then we have to unseal it again, which it probably won't let us unseal, to be totally honest. But we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, restart. Restart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then we could take down the interface. Yeah, we could also do that, too. I, I don't want to resort to that if we can avoid it. All right, right. Uh, control R and then type vault underscore token. There you go. And then control R C A cert. Yeah. Okay. Vault status. It should be sealed. Yep. Okay. Sealed. Let's unseal. <clears throat> Yeah, vault KV list. I guess it's probably still fine. <laughs> I don't think the security group fully took it out. So we're going to have to do a lot more drastic measures, I guess. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. Let's see. So it is a bit stuck, I think. You said KV list? Uh, no, 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 not KV list. Um, if you could do, uh, uh, what is it? Journal CTL space XEF space, or sorry, dash XEF. Yeah, okay. Uh, U. U? Yeah, space vault. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah, so here we go. So uh, as you control C. Okay, so this is, yeah. So someone explained it in the chat actually really well. So basically the storage is local, so it, it will be able to decrypt, right? So because it is locally storing the seal, um, the, the, the unseal, uh, sorry, the encryption decryption aspect of it, uh, because it's that's local, it will be able to decrypt and open sort of open wall and unseal vault, right? Um, yep. But it won't be able to join the other peers. Um, so it will show that it is available and it's up, but it won't necessarily show, it won't be able to, um, it's up and available, but it won't be able to access the other, um, other peers. So you'll notice that's where you say failed, you see that uh, a minute ago somewhere yep. at the top of the logs has failed to make request vote. Um, it can't dial into it. Right. So that means that if we are really borked about it and we decide to shut off the network, then it can still, you can still unseal it, but it won't be able to do anything. Like it won't be able to contact, right. It won't be able to contact vault. So in that case, you can't add new secrets engines and you can't, add or make any updates right to vault itself instead you get this timeout error um which you know fair we also disabled that um each operation needs a quorum but since it can't communicate with other peers it will fail eventually um so eventually i guess we'll see the operator members go kind of like this which is it can't 
um, it can't access it. Although it is still pointing to the leader. So let's uh, unset dollar sign vault underscore address or vault underscore ADDR. Okay. I think that's part of our problem right now, actually. Um, it can't, I don't think it's quite accurate. So let's vault underscore ADDR. Yeah, so let's unset it and do vault operator members again. Um, what this will do is point it to the local vault that we have, and hopefully it will, it, it may not show anything because it can't connect to it. So there we are. <laughs> So I guess we now have a failed vault <laughs> um, if we worked all network connectivity. However, the load balancer is still able to get to it. So that's great. <laughs> um, well, as if you want to go back to your browser and you want to go to the load balancer, you might get some interesting uh, information out of the UI because I think it's still pointing to it. Unless okay. It's caching. Unless it's caching it, in which case I have no idea. So here we are. Oh, no dollar and unset. Oh, that might actually be it. Hold on. Yeah, go back to your, go back to it. Did we not put okay. the dollar? I thought I did. Yeah. Oh, no dollar. Sorry, no dollar and unset. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. Vault operator members. It probably still isn't happy. Hmm. Eep. Still not happy. All right. Well, we're gonna while we wait for that to return an error back to us, let's go to our UI and see what it did. It might have completely ruined it. So who knows? Okay. Username? Uh, uh no, nope, token. token. Okay. So we mentioned briefly mentioned auth methods, but you can authenticate to vault using other methods. That's where the list is. Do I want to use the root token? Yep, root token. Let's see what happens in here. Now we know. Indeed. Mm -hmm. There we go. Little slow. Okay. So where are we going? Uh, well, you'll notice that you are in uh, like wrap. Let's check wrap storage. Why not? Let's go in there. Okay. Let's check. What did it? What what's going on in there? Um, so it is saying that there's a leader, uh, and it has the other stuff, but not much more, um, information on that. So I think it's probably mostly still, the UI doesn't show that anything is, is wrong, but the vault instances themselves can't communicate with each other. That's not something we can see through here. Um, but if you go to secrets engines, right, I don't think we got through this last time. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll notice that there's also, you know, KVV2 and stuff in there. So you have uh, you have some information there, um, which is, you know, kind of neat to have. Yeah. So that is the UI. Um, someone said, let's, uh, let's re-enable the security groups. Um, and we can do that. So let me re-enable security groups. Uh, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. So, so far, nothing. Is there a config option to remove auth methods that you aren't using from the UI? Um, probably, I believe so. But I don't think there's too many UI. Um, we can look. Let's look. Let me see. Mm. Hold on a second. I'm re-enabling security groups right now. Give me a second. Uh, let's not restart vault. We've already unsealed, but we just need to enable the security groups. So let me do okay. that. Uh, yes, let me add. Okay. All right. So let me double check that the security groups came back again. Okay, security groups are back again. So let's do vault operator members. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess now it's working again. So if your network came back up, then. <laughs> and you don't have to restart. No. Just, it just works. <laughs> it just works. 
but you can't make any calls if you, I guess if you do have, uh, if you do have an outage, right. And, um, the, the, uh, followers can't commute or none of the vault servers can communicate to each other, then you pretty, it pretty much means that it will just, um, it will fail to communicate. It will indicate that it will fail to communicate, but it won't change any of the states. So you can't access it. You can't really do anything with it. Um, but it's nice to know that once it's back up, it's back up. So there we are. So no split brains. No split brains. Very nice. Thanks. You know, big kudos to the vault vault team for designing a great, <laughs> designing a very, very well, uh, well, well, very resilient tool. <laughs> As you'd expect. Um, but also, you know, partly is, again, that's one of the reasons why you would consider doing um, Raft, the integrated storage, right? Because a lot of this is um, handled for you. I don't know. I can't speak to other backends, right? What happens with other backends? Hmm. Um, okay. So the question was, is there a config option to remove auth methods you aren't using from the UI? So let's look. Um, Melissa, if you could go to the vault config. Yeah, find vault in the UI? Yeah, uh, not in the UI, in, um, oh. in documentation. Okay, let's see here. Let me see if I can pull up. Vault config. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Um, if you can go down to UI, I think there's a UI config there somewhere. Uh, let's yes. see. UI. Let's scroll. Um, is there a way that we can change the auth methods? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> it appears not. I don't think we can change the auth methods in the UI. Although I am curious, maybe there are auth methods set up. So Melissa, if you go back to your terminal or go back to access, let's look at access. Hold on, let's look at access. Um, it just has token enabled. So none of the others, which is So we could enable stuff in the UI. Yeah, you can enable stuff in the UI. So if we want to do, we're, we're coming up on time, but I think the next one will pick up at this point where we're just going to enable some authentication methods um, and attach some policies to them. Uh, but we're probably going to recap because I know we're up on time. So Melissa, what did we learn today? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, we learned how to set up Vault HA and make sure that you have more than one vault server and that they're communicating with each other and that you can add secrets. Nice. Uh, now, was it, I guess, was it fun to go breaking things? It was less, it was less satisfying to break something, I guess, this one, because we didn't actually really break anything. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I like, I like breaking things, even, even if it isn't satisfying and that, oh my gosh, it's broken and everything's disastrous. I think it's still satisfying to, to try to break things and have mm -hmm. the peace of mind behind, oh, well, it, 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 even if I mess up, it's not going to mess up that bad. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I have to say it was nice to be able to uh watch it kind of go down and then go back up and we still uh, you know a nice nice participation from chat to help us um i appreciate the the tips and tricks and stuff from folks uh and the commentary so keep it coming um the next one i think we're going to pick up auth methods and policies uh we may throw snapshotting in there um because i think that might have we have two hours. We always do two hour time slots. So uh, we have snapshot, auth methods, and policies, and we'll just put them all together. Um, but if you have requests on content, do let us know. Uh, I just wrote down vault Kubernetes and also vault upgrades, um, which we'll probably push off to a different stream. But join us next week for the, for the next part of getting into vault. Um, and if you have questions in the meantime, do reach out to us. Find us on YouTube. If you want to replay this, you know, you can check it out as well. Anything else, Melissa? Nothing I can think of. All Thank right. you all. Thanks, everyone, for being patient with us while we manage technical difficulties. We'll get better at it. <laughs> all right. Have a great day, everyone.